Have you got the nerve to drive Papa Mike Tell from your door? Welcome to this week's edition of Hitting the Note, everybody. I'm E.J. Devocatus, and we're here at the big house in Macon, Georgia. And with us is one of the finest, finest guitar players you will ever hear. If you haven't heard of this fellow yet, uh, you must be hiding under a rock or something like that. But um, it's, it's a great privilege for me to present to everybody Mr. Derek Trucks. Hey, how's hey, it going? How's it, how's it going, man? Pretty good. Uh, Derek is uh, fresh off from playing the... Uh, the old Cherry Blossom Fest here in Macon, Georgia. How did that go last night? It went good. It was a lot of fun. We were working in a new drummer, but it, it was a good set. Yeah? yeah. How, how long have you uh, been using this new drummer? Well, it was uh, his first day. So oh, it was? Yeah, we practiced the day before with him, so it was kind of rushed, but it, we had fun. It was cool. Yeah. Now, who, who is this drummer you're speaking it's, of? Uh, his name is uh, Jan Rico Scott. All right. Very cool. Now, how, how, did you, uh, how did you like the crowd uh, last night? Was it a little rowdy for you? Or? No, I like it. It, it was... Cool, real responsive. Yeah, it's definitely one of the uh, one of the nights where I've seen the, the making people at their at their rowdiest here at the Cherry Blossom Fest. So, uh, why don't you give the folks out there who who don't know a, a heck of a lot about you um, some background? Um, you've you've played with you, you're you've played with amazing people, and uh, and I don't know. Why don't you tell us what was your first um, really big gig? I guess you could say it that way. I don't even remember. <laughs> you don't even remember. I started playing, uh, you know, just jamming, you know, with people around Jacksonville. And then finally, I think probably the first big gig was, uh, you know, I went with a band. We drove up to Toronto and did the Toronto Jazz Festival. So that was probably the first, you know, out-of-town out of gig we ever did. So that, yeah. was, that was cool, but I, uh, there's been a lot since then. So, so that, that was the original Derek Trucks band? No, well, I was just uh, playing with another band. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Now, the, this, this present band you have, you... You, there's been more than there's been one more than one incarnation of the Derek Trucks band, isn't that true? <laughs> yes, yeah, different every week. <laughs> it's different every week. Um, at the beginning, the what was it like? Was there the people in the band were old enough to be your father? Or? Well, I mean, they still kind of are, but uh, we're just <laughs> we're just trying to work on getting it right before we yeah. ever put anything, you know, an album out. So we're just, well, I mean, we're we're not gonna you know rush anything. We're just make sure we get everything right into where we want it so yeah now if if all y'all see any awkward lookaways by either me or derek it's because <laughs> you know the whole trucks family's here you know goofing around in the background so we're getting a few a few laughs in so so derek how old are you, are you now i you know people say oh man you got to hear this 12 year old slide guitar player and, oh yeah 11 but i mean obviously if you've, you've uh, gotten a little older how, how old are you now 15 15 yeah and so uh so why don't you tell us who you have sat in with before? I mean, you've, you've sat in with some incredible people. Yeah, I played with, uh, you know, Joe Walsh, Stephen Stills, uh, Buddy wow. Guy, and Dom and Brothers, and... Wow. That's in incredible. Now, the, the, do these people, do they go out of their way to, to make you feel comfortable during these gigs? Or, or what's, it, what's it like to get up there and all of a sudden there's... I mean, you're, you're 14, 13 years old, and all of a sudden you're up in front of 20,000 people. Uh, I mean, that, I have to say, I have to hand it to you, you really come through for, man, how young you are. It's I, I don't know, it's kind of wild playing with people, you know, that you've, you know, have always heard or, you know, heard of. But, I mean, once you get to playing with people at that level, it's kind of hard to, you know, say, you, you know, who you like playing with more. But, I mean, it's always cool to, you know, just to play in general, so. Yeah. Well, so how is, how is road life for you? Being, being as young as you are, it's got to be uh, pretty tough balancing the, the, playing and, and, and school and family and all that. How does that all work out for you? It all works out pretty good. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, the road is, I mean, there's always some difficulty. And I mean, yeah. it's not quite as easy as, you know, I thought it was going to be. But I mean, it, it's all worth it. Definitely. Yeah, it really is. All right. Now, um, why don't you tell the viewers, uh, well, when did you first pick up a guitar and realize, well, maybe I have something here? Well, I don't know if I even realized that yet. <laughs> But I started oh, well. playing uh, around nine. Really? Yeah. Now you just said you 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 don't think you realize that yet. So how do you respond when people, uh, twice, three times your age, come up to you and say, "Oh man, you're you're God, you're this. <laughs> I can't believe it." And you know they're forty or fifty or thirty or whatever my age, um, uh, and they're saying all this stuff for how amazing you are. How how do you take that? I don't know. Just kind of <laughs> it's kind of hard. You know, you just take it. I guess. I, I mean it's. I mean, you never want to, you know, believe what anybody says. <laughs> you just, I mean, yeah. you just got to, 
I mean, you shouldn't. Have, I mean, for me, Neil, not happy. You know, with never, you should never be happy with your plan. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, there's always somebody better. So. Yeah, it always gives you drive to do better. Um, are there any plans for, for, for a record? I know that uh, you made your professional recording debut on a Tinsley Ellis record. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think that was the first release thing that we did. And how was that? Is that uh, a good experience for you? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, we did that in Atlanta, I guess, a few months ago. Yeah. It came off good, though. All right. And... Um, do you have any plans yourself to put out a record as the Derek Trucks band or, or well, Right now we're kind of, we're just, uh, we want to make sure we get the band right and then, uh, you know, the material. So, I mean, I think it's pretty close, but we don't want to put anything out, you know, too early. I mean, there's plenty of time for, but I mean, there's no reason to rush it. So, I mean, it should be out pretty shortly, though. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going we're gonna to take a break. We're going to tell you where to, to go eat, where to go shop, what to do, and, and how to do it, I guess. Uh, We'll be right back with Hitting a Note. Elizabeth Reed Music Hall, where there's always a good time. IQ Radio. Love your special program, especially that acoustic rock on Sunday morning. Well, I just wanted to tell you that this is the best radio station ever made, and I'm really glad that we have something that I can actually enjoy listening to. Hey, I really love the station. Keep up the good work. I'm keeping it set to 96.5. I love IQ Radio. Um, I think it's great. IQ Radio, the intelligent choice. Once upon a time in Gray, Georgia, there lived a southern caterer extraordinaire who had a lifelong dream to open a restaurant specializing in his gourmet ribs. The best ribs ever tasted. Then one day at the crossroads in Gray, he came across a certain southern gentleman who not only loved ribs, but was a collector of southern artifacts and music memorabilia. That's when they hit upon the idea to combine their talents and open a place of their own, right on the very spot that they stood. Thus the beginning of the Georgia Rib Company. Here's to good friends. Welcome back, folks. This is Devocatus. This is Hitting the Note, and boy, do we have a treat for you. Right now, we're going to have, uh, along with Mr. Derek Trucks, um, Mr. Larry Oaks with an acoustic little set here, and I'm sure you'll dig it, and we will too. Go for it.
young man, it is chills of plenty here in the big house, and uh, for more than one reason, the, especially the music and maybe the fact that this is uh, Dwayne Allman's old room. We'll be right back with hitting a note. What's looking for, man? Uh, hot, spicy, hot, spicy. Let's see, we got something around here. <laughs> Rick Hanley's records, tapes, and CDs. Who's pink? Who's pink? Who's pink? Who's pink? Who's pink? Who's Rick? Who's now that's Who's Rick there. Who's pink? Who's pink? Who's pink? Well, I don't know. Which one do you think is pink? Floyd. There you go, man. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. I believe we got groceries here. Yes, groceries here. Oh, mama, how you doing? Hey, hey. Thomas behind us. Where's the groceries? Y'all been promising me food all day long. Oh, mama, is Red Dog home? All right, hey. here we are, here we are. Okay, where's the groceries? I'm ready to see what's up with this, guys. I'm hungry. If you have a hole in your soul, let's stop by H&H. You gotta be cool on the inside too. This is your Peach Public Libraries today. Once upon a time in Gray, Georgia, there lived a southern caterer extraordinaire who had a lifelong dream to open a restaurant specializing in his gourmet ribs. The best ribs ever tasted. Then one day at the crossroads in Gray, he came across a certain southern gentleman who not only loved ribs, but was a collector of southern artifacts and music memorabilia. That's when they hit upon the idea to combine their talents and open a place of their own, right on the very spot that they stood. Thus the beginning of the Georgia Rib Company. Here's to good friends. Welcome back, folks. Devocket is here. This is Hitting the Note. And I am joined by Larry Oaks, Mr. Larry Oaks, and Mr. Derek Trucks once again. And um, Derek, uh, I know we got a little off track there in the last uh, segment. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, who are your particular influences? And uh, maybe also, why, why slide guitar? What, what, what brought you to, to slide guitar in particular? Well, I'm I'm, I'm slide, I just, a uh, friend brought one over and it just kind of felt, <laughs> and then, you know, main influence is, you know, slide was definitely Dwayne Almond, and then, I mean, after that there's a ton of others, but that, that was definitely the main slide influence, so. Yeah. Now, uh, I know we don't, we're not going to harp on this fact at all, but if, for those of you who don't know, Derek is the nephew of uh, one of the original drummers of the Almond Brothers, Butch Trucks. So, Derek, did you... Did you actually listen to records and, and, and try to actually uh, play the same lick as Dwayne would play or, or anything like that? Or how did you really go about it? I, it was more of a, you know, uh, just the feel of it and the, you know, the fire behind it. I mean, never really, you know, direct, you know, sit down and cop licks, but, you know, just, you know, listen to it and, you know, just the, the basic style of it. Yeah. The approach. All right. Very cool. Well, uh, we all know here that this is not just uh, Derek Trucks. This is the Derek Trucks band. And uh, like I said before, we have Mr. Larry Oaks here. Now, uh, Larry, why don't you tell us, how do you fit into the whole picture here? And, and for how long have you uh, been a part of it? Uh, actually, I think uh, Derek and I met when he was about 11, so yep. about four years ago. And um, I had been out on the road with other bands. And uh, I, I saw him, and I said, now there is a good <laughs> thing to get in on. Yeah, uh, I can just, imagine. He just floored me. And, and mainly, uh, uh, the thing that got me first was that it, it's all about the music. Yep. You know, it's not yep. about what you're wearing. It's not about who's there. It's not about who's doing what. It's strictly about the music. Mm -hmm. And that was the first you know, turn on for me. All right. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. So are you guys uh, excited about this new incarnation? I know you've gone through a few changes. It's, it sounds really happening. Derek was saying you're just, you're just trying a new drummer, but it yeah, sounded we, good to me. Yeah, we just did our first gig well I just, I just, I just last night yeah. and we didn't know him before the day before that I don't think so. really <laughs> so you, you, <laughs> very quick yeah. yeah and he's he's uh smoking yeah well, uh, we've gone through a few people a few different lineups but it's getting better and better yeah right? and mainly uh it's bringing Derek yeah know, right out front and it's his material now and, and that's what makes it really oh good. really so it's yeah. writing a lot you're, of you're writing a lot of it yeah Derek? most of uh most of our stuff is all originals. We, that's why I mean that's what that's our goal now. Definitely. Yeah. Now do you do you write most of them yourself or do you? <laughs> no. 
do you write most of them yourself or do you uh, co-write with other people in the band? Well, uh, usually it's uh, me and Larry down at his uh, place in Jacksonville just go out there for a while and uh, yeah. just you know sit down and we've, uh, we've you know had quite a few good things come out of it so yeah. far. So. One right. or two. Yeah. One or two. Now, I, I know you guys have a, a big summer plan for, uh, for you, and uh, you've also done some big gigs in the past. Uh, why don't we start with the ones you've already done? Uh, Derek, you, you went out on the road with uh, the Greg Allman Band. Um, what did you guys think of that? Was it a good experience? Did you have a good time? Yeah, well, I thought it was a real good lineup. Had a lot of fun. The bands got along real good together. So, I mean, we did a few weeks with them. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, they were... They were Really cool with us. Um, yeah. On the first day, I told everybody on the whole staff to treat the opening act us like family. All right. Yeah, that's one of the big things about this whole music thing is family and music. I guess are the two two biggest things. Now, what about this gig in Brazil, Derek? I I, I didn't really hear much about it, but uh, you played somewhere in Brazil. No, actually, that's coming up. Uh, oh, that's coming up. Yeah, I guess uh, May. Yeah, we're learning the mambo. I think. Like, All right. <laughs> You should fit in perfect then. There you go. Is it is it like a blues fest or is it a? Yeah, I think it's a it's a festival in Rio. Yeah. Or right around. Yeah, there. just outside of Rio, I think it's 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 what a week long thing. Or yeah. Something. We're going out for four or five days. Really? Is this something that all of a sudden three hundred thousand people are going to show up to? <laughs> I, I, yeah, they're expecting uh, you know close to a hundred every year. What really? Wow. Well, that's great. Now, uh, what about other upcoming gigs? You have one in Atlanta at Lakewood Amphitheater. Right? Is that true? Yeah, we're playing with the. The Almond Brothers at Lakewood. Uh, I don't know when. When is it? Oh, yeah, April 23rd. Yeah, it's yeah. April 23rd, Sunday. Everybody better go. Show up. It'll be amazing. Be there. Derek will probably sit in with the brothers, as usual. Um, and so so you got Lakewood coming up. You got Brazil. What, what, do you have a, a national tour, North American tour, or anything like that? Well, I, we're leaving tomorrow for Colorado for a few weeks, but <laughs> I don't know anything past that. I don't keep up with the schedule too much. Oh, yeah. Larry, do you know any more? No, we're in the same boat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. So, uh, so I guess Derek was saying before you're gonna you're gonna keep on rolling on the road before you you go in there and do a record, but it should be a mighty fine one, man. With all for for as long as you've been playing without a record, man, that first yeah. one's gonna be a killer. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, you know it's been a in a great pleasure to to do this interview with you guys. I've had a great time. I I shake your hands. I know we got our hands full here, but. Uh, <laughs> This has been Hitting the Note. I hope everybody's enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you tune in next week. I'm Devocatus, and this is Make It Georgia the Big House. Take care.
3700 Certain restrictions apply.